Hey everybody, I'm Billy Mitchell with BedScoop TV. Today I'm here with Pat Donilon, CEO of Lumetta. How are you doing today, Pat? Very well, thank you. Great, great. It's great to have you here today. We're at the Security Through Innovation Summit, and we're going to talk about just that security, uh, particularly in the context of the federal government, and try to cover a little bit of everything. So I want to jump right into it with a kind of broad question, but how are you guys at Lumetta helping federal agencies improve their cybersecurity posture? We are heavily involved in, in, in the federal government. Uh, about forty percent of our business uh, okay. is, is is in that domain. So we consider ourselves to be specialists mm -hmm. uh, for the federal government. Uh, our specific focus is on uh, cyber situational awareness, in, in in simple form, meaning we provide uniquely that uh, visibility, network visibility, uh, that edge definition in the ever changing environment, uh, that uh, monitoring of uh, virtual um, uh, cloud uh, mobile devices. Uh, in real time, um, and defining uh, uh, traffic which should not be occurring, leaks mm -hmm. uh, to, to various areas, and we discover an, an, an enormous amount that no other product on the planet uh, achieves. We integrate this foundational information uh, into the cyber stack, and we, we are oriented on the next generation cyber stack, so we're all about real time, which is how we define our product. We're all about um, uh, remediation, automation, uh, and we are a critical component, we would say a vital component of that next generation cyber stack and we're in full implementation mode uh, right now across several government agencies. Awesome, awesome, great uh, rundown on what you guys do. I, a, a lot of what we've heard today, um, or one of the big topics we've heard today, are public-private partnerships um, being very important to federal agencies. Um, Maybe explain to me why they're important and if there's anything you see that would help those um, partnerships improve or mature. Well, first of all, we, we view uh, U.S. federal government as probably the, the primary authority on cyber in the planet. Okay. And a number of the agencies that we're engaged with are at the forefront of that. So our demeanor as a vendor is very much that uh, we bring certain knowledge, expertise to the table. Uh, but we don't bring that unique perspective that the, uh, the U.S. federal government and some of its cyber agencies bring. And so it's that collaboration, mm -hmm. that understanding of their needs, um, which in our mind we would see evolving into research projects. And in many of our proof of concepts that we have conducted, they have been just that. They have been looking at the perspective that uniquely U.S. federal government brings the uniqueness that we bring from the visibility, situational awareness standpoint, and blending that into a future solution. And we've done that several times. So we see that as highly scalable. And from a vendor standpoint, we also see it as, as advantage to us in terms of evolving our mm -hmm. products. Awesome. So we hear a lot about this term automation in this cybersecurity spectrum um, these days. And it's, it's a big thing, but are federal agencies adopting it as much as we think, or is there still room for improvement when it comes to agencies automating their security posture? Well, first of all, I, I don't think any organization er, uh, on the planet has a choice mm -hmm. because there is a funda fundamental uh, gap in human capital that yep. can deal with this yep. on, a, on a human to human basis. So the, the driver is there is an absolute mission critical need because otherwise enterprises are fundamentally uh, at risk. Mm -hmm. So it's not a a nice to have, <laughs> it is an, uh, a life or death situation sure, sure. In, a, in a federal context. So th that's a driver, it is probably more of a driver in a defense industry context than it is on any other vertical on the planet. Probably finance comes number two. Mm -hmm. and, and so therefore we would see that um, our approach to automation is very much in the context of we being a vital component in the stack, so in the cyber stack so that we're bringing this uh, automated feed, uh, providing the delta of visibility that, for example, an endpoint security product does not see, mm -hmm. a vulnerability scanning product does not scan, and we are providing automatically uh, that delta which enables, in an automated form, that uh, product to f function yep. at 100% of its capacity. And that's how we view, in very practical terms, how automation must work and does work. That makes sense. Wrapping up here, um, one final question, and it, it's, it's kind of 
open to, to whatever you want, um, but what are one or two things you think that federal agencies could or should focus on more just to enhance their cybersecurity posture? I, I think there is a, 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 a doing business as normal, I, if I was to say, and business as normal, uh, you know, from a vendor perspective, we don't have access necessarily as a relatively small company to the entire vista of system integrators that clearly are installed within the, the federal government. Yeah. And, and from our point of view, we think that the, the federal government is missing huge opportunity, A, to, best, to get best of breed products, and B, to save enormous amounts of money, which yeah. are two very practical things in terms of how this can be approached. So if, if, we, if I was to advocate one change, it would be to look at vendors, uh, emerging technologies, in a way that is not exclusively through the prism of the current model. Yeah, awesome, awesome, that makes sense. Pat, thanks for joining us today. It's been Thank a pleasure you. chatting with you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Thank Billy Mitchell with FedScoop TV. Thanks for watching.